Oh, okay. Well, first of all, thank you for him. And uh, I am so grateful. I'm so happy as well. Sorry, my heart is beating very fast. I met my husband four years ago, and um, he's been telling me about you. And um, I was like, yeah, that's nice, you know. <laughs> and then two, a month ago, we went to see you in Los Angeles, and uh, my life changed. I'm 33 years old, and my life changed completely. Your life hasn't changed, but your perspective of it has, which is what life is, is perspective, isn't it? Yes. Yes, yeah. and I get it, I, I, I get everything. It's almost like, duh, but I... <laughs> it, <sighs> That's that moment of remembering yes, who you really absolutely. are and what absolutely. you really know. Yeah. I've been in a, a, a few years ago, I was New in a- New title for a book. <laughs> duh. Right. <laughs> so, um, I think I'm, I'm a very, very good manifester. I mean, before I, I, I had a t teaching in my life, I, when I look back on my life, I think I, I know, I, I felt it. I, I'm a very good creator, which comes with sometimes uh, a downside because I'm very, very good at creating everything I want to have. I mean, I'm, I'm from France. I always wanted to be in the USA, married, have dogs, and that's my life today, you know? And, <laughs> but in the same time, I think I'm good at creating things that I don't want. Well, remember that the contrast is what parlays the desire. And it's the managing of that contrast that is the balance that is so delicious and fun. Because if you could ever get it done and you can't, if you could ever get it done so there wasn't more contrast that was causing you to ask for more, then there would be no energy flowing. And so once you get that clear in your understanding, that Sometimes your inner being, you understand the concept of your inner being, the reality of the existence of your inner being. Sometimes your inner being will actually inspire you into something that you call contrast and unwanted because it's the next logical step to cause you to formulate an asking that will shore up a whole bunch of stuff you've already put into your vortex because it all starts with asking it's all about supply and demand it's all about demand and then supply it's all about cause and then effect it's all about asking and then it being given and so if something doesn't happen that causes you to ask a lot of people are so sensitive to not wanting anything to ever be a little unsettled in their life that they don't let themselves ask for much they just try to keep everything reined in as much as they can they don't ask for bigness they don't ask for much more than what they already have because they fear that that upheaval is out of balance and therefore it's something not to be appreciated therefore it's something to feel regret about when what it really is is necessary for desire necessary for step one do you know all creation takes place in step one that's when you do all your launching of all of your rockets that's when it happens step two is source just lines up with what you've asked for and step three is you let it in enough that it manifests so that others can see it but the creation happened in that contrast don't you like knowing that and aren't you sort of ready to stop condemning the contrast and start embracing it and appreciating it and even reveling in the discovering of it it's like esther one time was dusting an etagere in their house several heavy heavy shelves with treasures on them sitting on little pegs and esther didn't realize the precarious situation that when she just rested her dust cloth that it was just the last touch that was going to cause that shelf to lose its position on that peg so the top shelf dropped onto the next and onto the next and onto the next and everything went crashing to the floor and Jerry is in the other room and he yelled stand still don't move because he heard the velocity of the breaking of the glass and sure enough there were shards of glass sticking into the wood floor around Esther's bare feet it was very exciting and Esther just stood still feeling so embarrassed about what she had done 
and Jerry said oh good more to buy <laughs> he saw it as opportunity replacing that stuff is fun finding treasures and so one of the things that had broken they thought of it as an art sculpture it was a Quan Yin God of compassion although they didn't know that at that time it was just pretty just set on that shelf in such a good way and so for years they looked for a replacement for that Jerry liked how soft the face was and how beautifully focused the hands were it wasn't expensive it was just special so they looked and 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 looked as we say what about that one no not quite right what about that one no not quite right that one's not tall enough that one's not that one's not that one's not quite so for years and 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 years they looked for that so the other day Esther is in a place in San Antonio looking for some art for her wall in her new house and the owner of the shop took her into a back room his personal office in fact climbed up on a ladder and reached deep into a shelf for some rolled art that he thought she might like and she did and while he's up on the ladder reaching 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 Esther's looking around his office and there is that identical exact piece to the exact detail so he climbed down from his ladder and Esther said I would like to purchase that from you he said it's not for sale and Esther said I get that <laughs> but I would really like to purchase that <laughs> and he said no no it's not for sale what do you think about these I think they're lovely I would really also like to purchase that and it's not for sale it's not for sale I get that I had one exactly like it and in 1995 I broke it and I've been looking for its replacement ever since and then my husband died a few years ago and I've been looking for it ever since that too I'd really like to purchase that and it's not for sale so they measured the other artwork and laid it out on the table and decided what they were going to do with it and what kind of frame they would put around it and how many pieces they would make out of it and Esther was there quite a while and then he said to her I've decided to sell that to you <laughs> my mother told me to he said that was a gift from my mother and she thinks I should sell it to you and Esther said that's because Jerry and your mother are hanging out together <laughs> in fact I'm sure that's why I'm here I'm sure he knew it was here I'm sure that's how I got here the non-physical is in cahoots all the time in other words non-physical energies always always guiding and sometimes guiding you to what seems like a dead end or a wild goose chase or even upheaval that you don't need in other words every piece of guidance doesn't turn out in the moment to be so obviously right on track in fact most of the time it doesn't look so obviously right on track even in this scenario it's not for sale yearning it's not for sale but you don't understand I found something that I've been looking for for a really 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 long time look over there grab it and run I think I smell gas <laughs> you might want to run upstairs and check it in other words Esther was really 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 focused on her wanting there really really wanting it seemed like a moment gone very wrong you don't understand I found what I've been looking for for a long long time and you want it you think it belongs to you yeah it's kind of hard for me now because I'm in a place where you know I meditate every day I'm satisfied but eager for more but sometimes it's very hard because when you're so satisfied 
How can oh, you, you need a lot the... more trauma and drama in your no, life. No, no, ah, <laughs> no. No. We're on it. <laughs> no, please, no. I had enough. I had, I had enough. And, uh, well, then would you like to edit your own vibrational offering? Yes. Instead of saying it's very hard, would you like to focus what you really mean? I have been misunderstanding. What you're saying does not go down well in a world of deprivation. His words were, I've got it so good that I don't have strong desire pulsing within me. Most people don't want to hear that from you, but we don't want you to care what most people want to hear from you. Did you hear us earlier? You're not ever going to get it done and you are not ever going to be free of contrast. And you know what's really going on? Here's what's really going on. You're really going to appreciate this because this is what's really going on. It's not that there is no contrast. It's that you refuse to reap the reward of it. Because you have believed what the peanut gallery has been saying for so long. Those who are disappointed in where you are. Those who need you to live just the life that they want you to live in order for them to feel satisfaction with where you are. And so even those who come to gatherings like this are fearful of experiencing contrast for fear being the teachers that you are, that you won't look good or that you'll look weak. Some years ago we were teaching, it was called the creation box and you just got some box of some kind and you just put representations of things that you desired in the box. And Jerry said years before that, that he had played that same game with a bulletin board where he had cut out pictures of things and made statements of desire and he'd put them on a bulletin board and then he hid it in the closet because he didn't want anybody to know that his life wasn't already perfect. And years later, that bulletin board was in a closet for a long time, long before Esther knew him. And he found the board in moving and he looked and he said everything on the board had already happened it had happened in relatively short period of time but the point that we're making here is he even in all of his then wisdom didn't want others to see him as needing or still wanting something because as a deliberate creator you don't want to admit that you're still open for new stuff that's what regret is. Regret is believing that I should be more right now. And I so should be more right now that then I'm not even going to own up to where I am. And we want to say, this is something that is so good to know. This is the brilliance of your inner being. This is the advantage that we have to you. We know where you stand right now, vibrationally in relationship to everything you want. And we see our work is to call you in the direction of what you want. Because what you want is where you really are vibrationally. So who you have already become is calling you forward. But if you are pretending that you are other than where you are, then you can't hook into that guidance. That would be like, can you imagine your navigational system? So you program in your destination, but when it says ways would like to use your current location, you say, don't allow. but guide me to where I want to go <laughs> and your navigational system says all righty but where are you not any of your business <laughs> you might not approve of where I am so I'm not going to tell you where I am well your inner being does know where you are and so your inner being knowing where you are is always giving you guidance but if you're not owning up to where you are then you're less likely to recognize the guidance because you're pretending that you're somewhere other than where you are. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. That was a big answer to something that felt like not such a big question, but it was a really big question. Your big question is things are so good. Are they complete? No. Do you want more? Yes. Can I have more? 